So over the past month there's been a lot of controversy on YouTube over the Fine Brothers. If you look at the videos they've uploaded recently, consistently there's a majority of downvotes. A bit of a flame war going on comments. Hank Green did an interesting article about this on Fusion. He goes on a bit about trademark law and how people are kind of misunderstanding it. And I think the thing is with trademarks, there's restrictions. If you're saying you can't trademark the word React, Apple is trademarked. And the distinction here comes between those kind of abstract concepts where they're not really descriptive of the product, where it's kind of like what it says on the tin. In theory, React World wasn't a bad idea. I'm not going to fault them for the concept, I'm just going to fault them for the way that they executed it. Would it have been better if they looked for people first, created these production teams, look at from like different cultural perspectives? If you're in the UK, if you're in Portugal, if you're in Australia, in some ways it's kind of like inviting audience participation. But then the logical question there is, what is that audience? How many media producers are in the audience willing to take a licensed property basically rather than creating something themselves they can get the funding they can get the resources but do they have the time would they build up the same following there's kind of a bit of an evolution on youtube with the changes in technology and everything increasing professionalism <laughs> youtube becoming someone's career rather than just a hobby. Nostalgia Critic and Cinematica, and same situation for the Fine Brothers. Is it a hindrance to creativity to have these corporate barriers, or is providing funding igniting it? And the idea of trademarking isn't inherently bad, but the problem comes with the content ID system on YouTube. It can flag videos which use the same trademark, not through any part of the creator themselves, but through automated algorithms. It's an incredibly flawed system. Videos which constitute fair use are taken down, even if they just use a particular word. In some ways as well, the connection between the back end of social media and the front end of social media, YouTube is coming a bit more like television. Back in like 2009, the BBC hosted some TV series on there for free. You get adverts for television. You have channels where they just put TV in the title just to sound cool, and it's like, kind of living in a bit of a convergence culture. Old forms of media and new forms of media are kind of coexisting. And there was a whole thing like a year or two ago where every YouTuber suddenly got a book deal. Dan Howell and Jack Howard getting radio shows. There's kind of like a connection between old media and new media. The concept of the trademark is kind of going back to the old forms of media. The whole concept of the format Strictly Come Dancing, X Factor, Comic Relief, and Dragon's Den, and like that sort of format carries on with the same branding and everything, taking an existence in another country. The culture doesn't exist in a vacuum, and it's not like created ex machina. The idea of the React video is not an original one. The X Factor was not the first program where people went on stage and performed music, and contestants were voted on or off. Strictly Come Dancing was not the first series to feature people poor on dancing. The concept of the React video is not a format in itself. There's always going to be a difference, whether a good difference or a bad difference, between the professionally done React video and a React video crowdsourced from Tumblr or with just your friends in. The graphics they use, the people they interview, the whole set that they use, the way that they edit their videos is kind of an independent thing. How far can you take trademarks? If you want the sort of support from big industries and the people with money, then you need to go back to the old forms of media. But if you want YouTube to be its own independent thing, then you can't really have that. Question is, can we divorce the creative from the video enough so we can actually give a video its rating on the actual quality of the video? I think in some ways we need to disassociate the creator from the product. Their content has gone downhill to when they were starting off. A lot of their content either served as a cultural record or, perhaps more importantly, reacting to social issues like the legalisation of gay marriage or teen suicide, kind of like activism. Since it expanded, it's been very pop culture heavy. 
and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but their content has certainly shifted. And I do find that whenever I see the videos in my subscription feed I like, I skip most of them. Do they stand out as distinctive as they did, or are they kind of just generic, I guess?